Hey there, Sock here from Sock e Ticket, and today's video we will cover over 200 plus tips, tricks, hidden features, and basically a complete tutorial for your Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. The Note 20 Ultra is one of the most advanced smartphones in the world with deep and rich features. And I want to make sure you squeeze out every benefit out of your purchase and become a master of your smartphone. So we are going to start off with some light and quick tips, then gradually move on into powerful advanced features, hidden features, a complete S Pen tutorial, and many more things that will blow your mind. This is going to be a long video and here's a list of all the sections available to you which will all be time coded for your convenience and ease of access. So let's dive in and master this titan. Let's get your money's worth. All right, so the very first thing I want you guys to do is to go into your settings and then go all the way down and then go into about phone and make sure you give your phone a proper name. Simply tap on edit and in my case I'm just gonna say Saki Note Ultra. Alright, so now when I connect to other Bluetooth devices or connect it to my computer, this is the name that's gonna pop up. It's gonna make it easy to recognize and a nice way to personalize your device. The next thing I want to talk about, we're going to tap on settings, we're going to go into your display, and then we're going to scroll down just a little bit, we're going to go to motion smoothness. So basically what you want to do is you want to have this at adaptive refresh rate to make sure you get that, you get that smooth scrolling as you navigate the phone. So with the uh, 60 hertz, it's going to be a little bit more choppy, with 120 hertz, it's going to be super smooth and you're going to love it. Now if you do end up going to 60 hertz, which is right over here, which is perfectly fine, you are gonna be saving some battery. However, it is gonna be a little bit more choppy, the overall experience, and one benefit with the 60 hertz is you can go into screen resolution and pick the highest, sharpest screen resolution out there. Now, if I were to go back here and try to pick the adaptive 120, it's not gonna allow me because this does not support QHD plus resolution. So if you want motion smoothness, make sure the screen resolution is at full high definition plus, which is perfectly fine, and then pick the adaptive and you're good to go. Now one more thing is when you tap this button here, the recent button, what's gonna happen is at the bottom you'll see a bunch of applications. These are suggested applications that pop up based on need. Now you can, if you want, disable these. You can tap on this option here, go to settings. You can say stop suggested applications. Now when I go over here, you're not gonna see them. Instead, you'll just see your recent apps. All right, the next thing I like to configure is, uh, if you pinch the screen, you wanna go to the home screen settings. From here, immediately enable swipe down for notification panel. Now let's say I don't have this and I go home. If I swipe down, it goes into my app drawer. I also swipe up, goes into my app drawer. So that's a little bit redundant. So what I want you to do is tap over here and enable this option, swipe down for notification panels, and then you can swipe anywhere on the screen to bring down the control panel as you can see. One more thing with your home screen is if you pinch the screen, go to the home screen settings, you can change the grid layout. So if you wanna see more applications on your screen, or less applications, you can go for 4x5, 4x6, 5x5, or 5x6 to fit maximum amount of applications or widgets onto the actual screen. Now, I like 4x6, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Now, let me quickly go back over here, I'm gonna tap on home screen settings. One more thing you can do is you can have apps button enabled. So if I enable this guy, and if I go home, I will actually have an apps button that I can just tap and go into my application drawer. All right, so that's fantastic. And a real quick thing, again with the home screen, is here's a folder. So when I tap on this, it expands. You can quickly customize your folders. First, you can change the name by tapping there. And number two, you can tap on this icon to change the color of the actual folder, as you can see. And if you wanna add something into the folder easily, tap on the plus, pick any application you want to go in there, tap on done, boom, it just drops right in. 
All right. Now, one more thing I like to configure as soon as possible is when I pull this down, I want to see the brightness slider right over here. So what you want to do is you want to pull this down one more time and then tap on the three dots on the corner and then go into quick panel layout. And from here, I want to enable show brightness on top. All right. Then you click done. Now, when I pull this down just once, the brightness is right there for me to quickly configure if necessary. Now, this phone is a powerful multimedia powerhouse. It's great for watching movies and listening to music. So you want to maximize those benefits. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your settings. Okay. You want to go into your advanced features and then you want to scroll all the way down and make sure video enhancer is enabled. So this is going to basically enhance the image quality of your videos to enjoy bright and vivid colors. And it's going to apply to any application you download that is a multimedia application such as Netflix, YouTube. Watch it without it and watch it with it enabled and you'll see the difference right away. So that's for video. And for audio, what you want to do is you want to go up here and then you want to go into your sounds and vibration. You want to go all the way down and go to sound quality and effects. From here, make sure Dolby Atmos is enabled. You can go inside and pick auto and this is going to give you the best possible sound with the two speakers, the stereo speakers in your Note 20 Ultra. You can go for manual setup as well. So if you know you're about to listen to music, just go for this or movie or voice. It's up to you. I just go with auto. It just picks it up automatically. And also make sure Dolby Atmos for gaming is enabled. So if you're playing a game, you want to make sure to get the best possible uh, sound experience. Okay, so that's that's that. Now with the home screen, there's something very important. Now it's very hard to move things around one by one. What you can do with a Samsung phone is you can press and hold, okay, and then select items from the menu and select things, grab them all, okay, and move them around at the same time. This is going to make it very easy for you guys to move a batch of applications from one screen to the other, no problem. So now I can just pull this down and have a nice and clean look. Additionally, if I were to go here and again, if I press and hold and if I select items, I can select multiple items and perform these functions such as disable or just remove them all from the home screen at the same time if I don't need it. So that makes home screen customization very fast. One more thing, you pinch the screen, you go over here, you've got your Samsung daily. If you swipe over, it goes there too. Now, I don't like it that much. So what I do is I pinch the screen, go over, disable the Samsung daily. All right. And now on the outside, you're going to not see the Samsung daily at all. Uh, it's not a big deal. If you want to use it, that's great. But personally, I don't like it. The next thing that's very important is this power button right over here. So that's called the side key slash power button slash Bixby. So you want to customize that so it works for you. So if I go to my settings and if I go into my advanced features and if I go to the side key here, I get to customize it. So right now, if I double press the side key, it launches the camera. That's great because you can launch the camera at any time and start to use it immediately or you can enable it so it launches Bixby or an application. So if I were to choose an application, let's say calculator. Now, when I double tap, it launches the calculator application. OK, so you can customize this as you need. Now, if you press and hold, you want to make sure you choose this one power off menu. OK, so you can press and hold and gives you the option to restart power off your device. But remember, you can always always pull this down and do the same thing from the software button right here. So it's going to be up to you. Uh, if you want to use Bixby, you can choose it for Bixby and then use the power from the top. All right, let's move on. And of course, this is a note device. So we have the S Pen. So there's a couple things I want you guys to configure with your S Pen as well. So let's grab it. Now, when you come close to the screen and press the button, it brings up the it brings up the command center, the control center. And here you have a bunch of shortcuts you can click on and perform some actions. All right. Now you can add more over here. What you want to do is you want to tap on plus. All right. And here's everything you can add onto your S Pen's shortcuts. 
Now the shortcuts that are active appear on the side and you can choose various other things such as create a note, translate to go there as well and you can have access to quick apps. So I can go for the calculator, Chrome, just an example, camera and let's go for drive and that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten options. So when I go out now, when I click this, I'm going to have 10 shortcuts. Again, all these shortcuts are fully customizable. Now, when you fill them all up, you're not going to see the plus icon at the bottom. So how do you modify it? You go to your settings, all right, and then you scroll down under air command. You go to shortcuts and you can modify it right here. If you want to remove something, tap here. If you want to add something, tap here. Very easy. Now you can access the same setting from settings uh, advanced features and S Pen and it's going to be at the bottom here and there's a lot else happening here but we're going to make a dedicated video to go over every single S Pen feature but this is the one that people use most you tap it you got your shortcuts right here and you, I want to make sure you guys know how to customize all this stuff we'll talk about everything else in a separate video that's going to be fully dedicated to the S Pen only. The only other thing I want to show you guys here is show floating icon. You enable this and now I have an icon that I can actually just tap on to bring up the same menu. I don't have to press the button like this. All I have to do is tap on the icon with the S Pen. Boom, you get the same menu. So that's going to be up to you as well. Now let me quickly launch the camera application. I'm going to show you a quick tip that is very useful. So basically, here's the shutter button. You press this, takes a photo, right? Now, if you want to have this in a more convenient location, all you do is just grab it and put it anywhere you want. You still get this one, but now, based on how you're holding your phone, you can take a photo by tapping on this button, and you can put it anywhere. When you're done, you put it back where it belongs, and that's it. And this is very important. Now, you know that your main camera is 108 megapixels. So by default, it's set to be at 916. So that's fine. It's still going to take amazing photos. But if you want the maximum quality, sharpest photo with maximum detail, you want to tap here. You want to choose 108 megapixels. That's going to use the full force of the camera to give you the sharpest photo available. All right, now let's quickly talk about the, uh, the lock screen. So I'm going to lock the screen. I'm going to double tap. That wakes up the screen. And on the top here, as you can see, you can scroll through a bunch of face widgets. So this is my time. That's my uh, music controller. If I had any music playing, and if I swipe one more time, that's my Bixby routines. Now, let me show you how to add more stuff here. So if, we, if you tap on these settings, and if you go into the actual lock screen, what you do is you go to face widgets right over here, okay? And you can enable or disable a bunch of them. I can have weather, alarm, today schedule. Now, when I turn off the phone, the screen, if I double tap it, I can go through all of them. That's the music player. Again, you would see a play, pause music controller here. If you had music playing, that's my calendar. It says take medication. That's my alarms, okay, no alarms the next seven days, and that's my weather. So you can enable face widgets on the lock screen. And one more thing that's very important with the lock screen is if I tap on uh, lock screen again, right here, at the bottom we have something known as the shortcut. So if I tap on this one, these are the two shortcut buttons I have on the lock screen right here uh, for quick access. All you do is grab and slide it launches that application, okay? And what I can do is I can choose from bottom corners to floating button method. This one works a little bit different. So basically, if I lock the screen, if I double tap, what I do is I log in, but don't let go of the screen. Now I can still access those two uh, applications. I just swipe over the one that I want. It's gonna launch that application. So that's fantastic. And when we go back inside here, you can change the left shortcut and the right shortcut to whatever you want. So if I had it, that option, left shortcut can launch the calculator, right shortcut can launch the um, calendar. So it's all up to you. And when you make that change, also applies to the floating button. All right. 
let's move on in the lock screen again you want to make sure it's fully customized so when you're in the lock screen make sure you guys go to clock style and pick the lock screen you want on the actual lock screen so tap on clock style go for lock screen and then from here you can pick between the various different clock styles that you see here and not only that you can go in and change the color to anything you want so i can go for full black as you can see so you can change the type and the color of the actual clock that's in the lock screen let's do it one more time tap tap boom boom right there all right so fully customizable lock screen it's absolutely amazing and one more thing i personally enjoy again that's going to be in the lock screen if you tap on the lock screen uh, again right here uh, at the bottom it says contact information now i use this as a signature so i'm going to just type in Saki tech okay i'm going to say done and then i'm going to cl close the screen double tap and now it says Saki tech right there under the clock and you can add anything you want there if you want your contact info that's great if you lose the phone or you can put an important quote there to make it even more personalizable and finally in the lock screen we have something known as the always on display so it is right now it's turned on and if i tap on it it is designed to go online when you tap the screen so turn it off tap the screen once and it's going to show you the always on display the clock the date the battery all right what you can do is you can have that to show always which i don't recommend because it's going to uh, take more battery so it's just going to pop up and stay there okay so i like to tap the show but on top of that i like to do the clock style so i like to change the way my clock style looks and i like to change the color so now my always on display is tap to show and i have a different clock style and of course i can also kill the brightness and just keep it at maximum brightness so I, the maximum brightness is nice for me because then i can see it easy whenever i tap on it it'll also show you notifications at the bottom if you have any so that's why it's called always on a quick tap to show it to you now when you double tap again it launches the uh, lock screen from where you can log in if you don't double tap you single tap you just see the always on but you still can log in right from here from the fingerprint sensor now talking about the fingerprint sensor i want to go to the settings uh, i want to go to biometrics and security and from here you want to go into your fingerprints option here you tap on it put your password in mine is just a simple and then it says fingerprint one and fingerprint two when you tap on check added fingerprints it's going to tell you which finger is this that's fingerprint one so what you want to do just to be safe is tap on fingerprint one and change it to left left index all right just like this uh click save and now this is the left index it's a nice way to make sure everything is properly named and you can find things easier uh, let's go back out and also over here we have the biometrics preference uh, screen transition effect do you want this or not if i disable this my fingerprint logging experience is going to feel faster because they do away with the transition so look at that boom now with this one there's a slight transition effect gives you a nice effect it's a little bit more slow it just gradually goes inside as opposed to instantly going inside so that's going to be up to you if you just want to feel for it to be faster now one more important thing is navigation so as you can see i have three buttons at the bottom i've got this button i've got the home button and i've got the recents button that's the way i like it but some people like to go to settings go to display and then go to navigation right over here and from here you can go for full screen gestures so the buttons disappear and you can just use full screen gestures which is going to make it a little bit more immersive overall to pull up the recent app you just go like that to go back you just go like that all right so that's up to you navigation buttons or full screen gestures and with this one you can tap on more options and customize it even further so i can go for this one now i got three little, little uh, icons at the bottom lines now this one will give me recents this one is going to take me home and this is going to take me back as you can see if i want to go back i just use this one 
Most people prefer this one right here. I'm just gonna go with this one for this video. By the way, if you go for full screen gestures, uh, you can disable the line. So all you do is tap this and that line disappears. Now it is completely immersive as you desire. It's all gonna be up to you. So let me go back over here and let's move on. One more thing over here under display is the edge screen. So I'm gonna tap on this one. I'm gonna skip the edge panels for now. I'm gonna go to edge lighting. So when you tap on this one here, what happens is when somebody sends you a text message, gives you a call, you can have these nice effects around the corner of the display. So let me go to advanced. Uh, let's make it real wide so you can see it easy. Let's pick a nice green color. So you can see if somebody gives me a call, I get that. Or if, I, if somebody sends me a text, a notification, that's what I get. But then I have all these various options, notification options, okay? I can go for fireworks. Look at that fireworks effect and the line. We got the eclipse effect. If I swipe over, I got the spotlight effect. And every one of them can have a different color and also advanced options, all right? Fantastic. One more thing that's very important. It's a very large phone and hard to use with one hand. That's why we have a one-handed mode. So you go down, you tap on advanced features, you scroll down just a little bit and go for one-handed mode. You tap on this one, you enable it, all right? Once you enable it, I have a couple options on how to activate it. I'm just gonna use the button method right now. So all I do is double tap the home button and the screen, the entire phone becomes tiny. I can use it with one hand. And if I'm holding the phone with my left hand, I can left justify it. If I'm holding on the other side, I can right justify it. And I can change the size a little bit. If, I, if it's too small, I can make it a little bit bigger, but still it's gonna be very easy to use. I can do anything, watch videos, listen to music, make phone calls in this mode. When you're done, tap here, Boom, you're back in business. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your phone application. So this is important because it gives you hardware keys to control your phone. So go to your phone application, tap on the settings, go into the settings. And from here, go to answering and ending calls. What you can do is you can press the volume up right here to answer a call when they call you instead of swiping on the screen. And then you can use the side key when you're in a phone call to end that phone call again using a hardware key instead of swiping stuff, all right? So that's great. I always use these options. Now, one thing with the messages application, when I tap on this one right here, if I go into a particular message, any message, what I can do is tap the options, all right? Go into customize wallpaper and change the background for that particular conversation. And then I click done, and now that conversation has that background color. Or if I tap again, I can tap on a uh, the gallery, which is gonna go into the gallery. I can pick a photo, and I can choose the portion of the photo I wanna use. Let's just go like this, and that can become the background for that conversation as well. It's all gonna be up to you. One more thing, you have the option uh, to change the background color as well from black to white. Fantastic, let's move on. Now, quick tip on the control panel. If I pull this down, remember, if you press and hold the button, the icon, it'll take you into the actual menu, the detailed menu. If I pull this down and tap on the actual text, that's just gonna show me a quick menu, all right? And with the flashlight, when you tap the text, you get the option to turn it on and change the intensity of the brightness of the uh, flashlight on the rear. So that's all fantastic little tactics. Now one more thing, you wanna make sure your device runs at optimum performance at all times. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to settings. Every now and then you wanna go into your device care and you wanna check this number here. It's best if it says 100%, if it doesn't, you tap on optimize now, it does its thing and then your phone is optimized for maximum performance. Uh, let's see what point we get, 100 points. Now, one more thing is this button here, you don't wanna come in every five minutes to do this, all right? What you can do is you can pinch the screen, go to your widgets, look for device care, and you can grab this one and put it right here. And basically, also you can change the color, black or white, and also change the transparency, it's all up to you. 
But basically, if you tap on this optimize button, it does the same thing. Also shows your storage and your memory. All right. So you don't have to come here all the time. You can just have this widget. It's built in. Tap optimize and your phone is going to be good to go. All right. So in this section, we are going to be covering the S Pen. We are going to cover every single tip, trick, feature, hidden feature, and all the capabilities of the S Pen. S Pen is much more powerful than you can imagine. And you want to make sure that you maximize your ownership because you paid a lot of money for this device. So let's dive in and get started. So here's the S Pen. And let me quickly show you the three major components of the S Pen. The first one is when you bring the S Pen closer to the screen and click on the button, it brings up the Air Command menu. Okay, these are a bunch of very powerful and productive tools for your smartphone. The other thing is, if you look over here on the top, S Pen also happens to have Bluetooth remote control functionality. So you can control your phone from a distance using the S Pen. For example, I can press and hold the button, it will launch the camera. All right. And finally, if I go into my settings and if I go into my advanced features, and if I go into my S Pen, I have a whole bunch of items where I can configure my S Pen in detail. So let's dive in and get started. The first thing I'm going to cover is all the S Pen settings available that you, that you can tweak to customize your S Pen. The very first thing in this component is if you go all the way down, set this up as soon as possible. It says pen proximity alert. So basically, if you were using your S Pen, you put the S Pen on the table and you grab your phone and you walk away, you are going to get a sound warning letting you know that you left your S Pen behind. Go get it. Now, I lost my S Pen several times in the past. So I know that I need to enable this feature for sure. So make sure pen proximity alert is always enabled. And also it shows you at the bottom the last detached date and time. So a very useful feature. Now let's go to the top. All right. I'm going to skip the air actions. Those are all the Bluetooth remote control functions. I'm going to talk about this whole section in the second part of the video. Let's go back. Let's talk about the S Pen Unlock. So basically what I can do is if I enable this option, okay, I would have to dump in my current pin number. Let me do that right now. Once I do that, what I can do is I can use my S Pen to unlock the actual smartphone. All right, so let me turn off my phone. All right, now I have my S Pen right here. I'm going to click the button. Let's see what happens. It unlocks the phone using the S Pen. So if you want that kind of convenience, you can do that if you so desire. Let's go back to advanced features and S Pen. So that's the S Pen unlock feature. Now then we have the screen off memo. Basically, again, if your phone is turned on, and if you want to jot a quick note, all you do is you press the button on your S Pen, double tap on the screen, and that's going to bring the quick memo option. You can take a phone number down, write an address, take a quick note, save the note, and just move on. You don't have to turn on your phone. You don't have to go inside. So that's the screen off memo. Let's go back into that setting. The next thing is you can use the same option to create a note with the pen button. So again, we have the pen button here. I can go over here to the home screen, press and hold, double tap, create a note immediately. All right. So that's fantastic as well. You can do it in the lock screen or you can do it at the home screen. Actually, you can do it anywhere. I can do it even right here. Take a look at this. I'm going to press double tap, boom, we've got a note. So I can take a note quickly at any application. If I'm reading newspaper and I want to quickly jot down a note, press double tap, boom, boom, and you're good to go. The next thing is one of my favorite things. It's known as the air view option. So let's go to air view real quick and make sure you enable it. Now with the air view, when you go into certain applications, you are able to hover over items to get previews. So let me just go to the calendar right now, just to give you an example. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over my entries. So take a look at this. I hover over the entry. It gives me a quick preview. I'm not touching the screen. I'm just hovering the S Pen over the actual screen. And you are going to see a tiny little preview pop-ups come right up. Now, while we are in the calendar, what you can also do 
is you can tap on this button here and you can start writing, taking notes on your actual calendar and you can zoom in if you want up to 400 times to write stuff down on a given date. Once you save it, that's gonna actually stay on your calendar. One more thing you can do here, if I tap on the pen button, let's say I wrote a bunch of items. Okay, let's say I can write something like this, something big, and that's fine. After I write that big stuff, I can tap on this lasso button, select the item that I just wrote, it gets selected, and then I can resize it with the S Pen, and I can put it on any date that I want. So if you wanna write precisely larger, and then resize it and put it somewhere else, and you can always go inside and edit those things. If you wanna move them around, you can move them individually. It's all gonna be up to you. You can use the lasso tool. So that's fantastic. Uh, also with the air view, you can go into gallery. Let me just go to my gallery real quick. Here's a bunch of pictures, and I can hover over the pictures again to get larger previews of that photo, and I can even delete them right from here. So if I don't want this, I can delete it by tapping that tiny delete button uh, that pops up, or I can share it. And you can see, again, you can get previews of what that function does if you hover over items. So you can do this on a lot of different things, as you can see, okay? So let's move on, let's talk about the show pointer when hovering. So when I hover my S Pen over the screen, I see a little pointer that follows the tip of the S Pen. Uh, I can disable that. I actually personally don't like it, so now there's not gonna be a little uh, circle that follows you around, like a little pointer, as you can see. A little hard to see, but it's there. So if you can, uh, if you want, you can disable that. Now with this one, if you have extra S Pens that you've purchased, maybe as a backup, you can enable this option, so then you can use any S Pen you want on the actual smartphone. A lot of people don't use this option, but it's there if you want it. Now let's go down. And then we have the air command option customizations. So again, if I press the button here, it brings up the air command menu, okay? This is just another component of the entire S Pen ecosystem. So let me just skip these three items for now. I'm gonna come back to it when I fully cover the air command. Let's skip down and go to this one. When S Pen is removed, what do you want S Pen to do? So your S Pen is in its housing at the bottom here, right here. You pull it out, what do you, wanna, what do you want the phone to do? You can either do nothing, which is what I choose most of the time, or you can quickly create a note. So I pull it out and boom, what happens is, this is what happens, it pulls up a quick note so you can quickly jot down a note, okay? And that happens when you pull the S Pen from its housing at the bottom. Or if you want, you can go for the Air Command menu. So you pull the, the, the pen out and this menu right here, just comes right up, okay? So it's fully customizable, all up to you. And then at the bottom, we have uh, two more options. Do you want to play sounds when you insert the phone into its housing or when you remove the S Pen or when you write something down? So if you're writing something down, do you want the sound of pencil and paper actually happening? It makes the noise of a pen or a pencil writing on a piece of paper. And of course, when you remove your S Pen, do you wanna get a little vibrational feedback or not? You can turn this off. It will save you some battery life, nothing major. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to the Air Actions. This is where you can use your S Pen to remotely control your camera, your gallery application, and your phone in general. And then we are gonna be talking about the Air Command menu towards the end, okay? So let's talk about the uh, Air Actions. So first and foremost, there's a little battery in this S Pen. When you put it in the housing, it charges the battery. Right now, it is 100% charged, and it charges very quickly within minutes. So first thing we have, hold down the Pen button to open the camera. So I can hold down the Pen button, and it launches the camera. Remember, don't do it when you're too close to the phone. If you press and hold here, it brings up the air command. You have to be a little farther away from the phone to use the Bluetooth remote control functionalities. So if I press and hold right here, it's gonna launch the camera, all right? Now I do wanna let you know, you can customize that. So when you hold down the pen button right here, it can do any one of these options here or you can launch an application. So let me just bring up the calculator. So now when I hold down, 
it launches the calculator, all right? I like the camera because it's useful if you're far away from the phone and want to take a remote photo. So that's option number one. Option number two, we have brand new Anywhere Actions. So again, I press the button on the phone and I draw that shape and it takes the action that I, I assign to that shape. So in this case, I have assigned the back button, all right? In this case, I have assigned the home button. Every single action here is customizable. So let's uh, do a quick example. Let's say I wanna go home. Normally I tap the home button, it goes home. In this case, what I can do is again, don't get too close, stay a little bit far, press the button and go like this. It's gonna go to the home, all right? And that's because I have customized that action, that shape. Let me just pull that up to actually get that done. I can also launch an application again. If I wanna do calculator, now it's gonna launch the calculator. So, so that's what this does over here. Let's move down. This is much more uh, useful actually. These are the app actions. So let's tap on camera. And as you can see, if I single press the button while I'm in the camera application, I can take a photo. If I double press, I can switch the cameras. Now let's give you some examples. Let me go back here. Let me just change this back into the camera. So when I hold down the pen, it launches the camera. Okay, now I can press, takes a photo as you can see. Okay, if I double press, it switches the camera. If I double press again, it switches to the rear camera. So these are the options you can use with the app actions. For each camera, you can assign several buttons to that application so you can remote control it with the S Pen. And you can do this across the room. It doesn't have to be this close. You can have the phone on the other side of the room and you can still control it. Now with the gallery, for example, single press takes you to the next item, double press previous item. So let me launch the gallery real quick, just right here. So let's launch this. Single press goes to the next one, next one. This one, there we go, next one. Double tap, comes back, double tap, comes back. So you can customize this for any application that you want. Uh, the support applications are listed right over uh, here. Again, just tap this and customize it as you desire or turn off if you don't wanna use that particular application. And then at the bottom, we have the same stuff. When you're in the camera, what does a single press do? It takes a photo or does nothing. All up to you. If you're in a music player, single press, plays, pause, music. Uh, so you're playing music for your friends. Maybe you're having a party. You can press this to play and press it to pause from a distance or do all these things right here, as you can see. Fantastic. So that's the air actions. That's the second huge component of the S Pen. Now let's move on and talk about the air command menu, which is a bunch of settings right here. Now you can always tap on this here. You go to the same settings, the S Pen settings. Let's scroll down and let's take a look at the air command. Now from here, you can customize the shortcuts that you get on the actual air command menu, okay? So let me just X them out a little bit. Let's take a bunch of these guys out. Let's just leave two. Now when I go home, press the button, I only have those two, okay? So let's go back to settings. Let's go back into the shortcuts. Let's say I wanna add a couple more. I wanna add this option here, this option, this option, and let's say I wanna add a couple applications like the calculator, calendar now when i go back out all right if i press it i have them right here for quick access launch from here boom boom get some stuff done and move on so let's tap this again again let's use this settings okay we're in the settings remember you can come to this settings also from settings advanced features s pen same thing let's go down a little bit now this one here says show floating icon and that's this icon right here i can turn that off if i don't need it I don't think anybody needs it because if you have it, all it does is just sit there. You can tap on it to launch air command. But why do you need to tap on it when you can just press the button like this, uh, like this, okay? So I like to turn that off. Go to settings, turn off the floating icon. And this one right here, if you want to bring the air command at the press of the S Pen button, you want to keep this enabled, okay? I like to keep this enabled. Otherwise, it's not gonna come when I press it. So keep this enabled, disable this, less stuff on the screen. It is movable, so you can put it anywhere you want, but I don't like it. 
All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these things off, okay? Take off, 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 and then I'm going to add all the S Pen features. These are the S Pen specific features. Add, 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 add. Okay, let's just add as many as I can. Now, this one here and this one is not that important. Uh, this is good. This is not that important, and this just views all your notes. Not a big deal. So let's go over all these amazing features of the Air Command Mini. That's the final part of this video. All right, so these are some powerful productivity tools. So the first one is very simple. You tap on it, it just creates a note. You take a note and you save it. By the way, every note that you save gets saved in Samsung Notes, which is gonna be right here, okay? Just so in case you don't know. Now, the other thing is, if I press the button here, I can do the smart select option. Now, this is amazing because when I click it, what I do is I get a bunch of options. So let's do it with the square one. I can select any portion of the screen and it gets saved as a screenshot in my gallery by tapping this button. Again, let's do that one more time. Screenshot, smart select, grab the uh, circle and I can grab a circular screenshot as you can see. And of course I can do this in any screen, any application. So let's say I was in a map application, I can tap on this one. Let's say I wanna send a portion of the map to a friend. Let's pick the circle, I can just go like this. And then once this gets selected, I can tap on the pen icon and even write on the area. I can tell them to go right here. And then again, I save it and it gets saved as a circle. So that's just fantastic. Now real quick, also you can do uh, the lasso tool so you can select just any portion you want. You can customize it and send it that way as well. Now the other thing is screen right. So when I tap on this, and if I tap on screen right, it takes a full screenshot and then quickly allows you to write on that screen, okay? So I can send a question to a friend. Hey, you know, what is this? Can you tell me? I can of course come here, hover at the bottom, and change the color of the pen if I want, okay? Make it more legible. But one more example, if I was in the settings, for example, let's just go to the settings. Let's say I don't know what this is. I can just press the button, uh, screen right, okay? Uh, pick the pen that I wanna use, and just basically say, hey, what is this? And send it to my friend, and he can tell me the answer, or so send it to somebody that is knowledgeable. The next thing, let's tap on it, is the live messages option. You tap on this one, just give it a, the permissions it's asking for, okay, that's normal. So you can choose to use live messages on a photo, you can go to your gallery, or you can just create a brand new. I like this one, so you go to color, okay, and I pick a color for the background, I can say start drawing, and then I can pick a pen that I want from here, you have all these special effects, and let's say I draw something like this. Now what I can do is I can I can play it again. I can see what I what I what I drew. I can play that. Once I'm satisfied, what I can do is I can tap on done and it's going to save that as a video and I can send that to other people, all right? So it's saving it right now as you can see. Once it's saved, it says share. I can tap here. From here I can share with anybody that I want. So that's fantastic. Now again, just let me give you one more example here. Uh, so change the background to whatever you want, as you can see, and then start drawing. Pick the pen that you want and pick the color. And if you want to send a heart to somebody, there you go, okay? Ridiculous heart, but you know, you get the point. You play, uh, press play, plays the live message, and then you can save it and share it, all right? Fantastic stuff, as you can see. Change the size also if you want. So that's one option. Let's click it again. The other option we have, I'm gonna skip the Bixby Vision option. We go to Translate. This is an amazing little feature. Let me first go to Google for this. Let me just go to News over here. Let's uh, go to News right here, okay? And uh, let's just go into an article here. I'm gonna scroll down and let's just remain here. So let's say here's a language here I wanna translate to English or I wanna translate to this to French. All I do is press the button bring up translate and I can say translate from and of course I'm going to pick English in this case and then over here there's a little uh, option that pops up I can say translate to 
Let's just pick French just for the hell of it, okay? Now, if I hover over one of these words here, it's going to translate that word into French, as you can see. What if I want to translate an entire paragraph? I tap this button here. Now, it's going to translate the entire paragraph that's selected to French. So, fantastic. And you can move this around. You can change the input language and the target language right here. When you're done, you can exit out. Okay, so that's on the fly translation. Let's go on, keep going on. Magnify, you tap it, you get a magnifier. Look at that. Okay, you can change the size of the magnifier to 300%. Look at that. I can magnify on anything that I want. Uh, if I tap over here, it changes the window size, small window, large window. Okay, it's all up to you. When you're done, you exit out. Tap it again. Go down, we have the glance feature. Now, this is a very good feature. You have to have an application open for the glance feature. So let's launch this application. Let's tap on this button. Let's tap on glance. So that application got minimized to the corner here. So I can glance at it by hovering the S Pen over it. Look at that. Let's say I'm doing something. Let's say I'm, I'm taking some notes on a piece of paper. I can glance at this, continue taking my notes. So, so that's just fantastic. You can do this any application that you want, okay? When you're done, you grab this guy. If you want to kill the glance, remove it. All right. Now let's move on. The final thing that we have here is the write on calendar feature. I already showed it to you guys. You can pull up a calendar and start writing on it as you please. Okay. Oh, you have to pick the pen here and write on the calendar. Now this is great for just marking the calendar. Uh, you can change the color of the pen, whatever you want and save it. It gets saved onto your calendar. So that is the air command menu, as you can see. We went over the air command, remote control functionality. Here it shows the percentage of the S Pen's battery. And of course, we went over all the settings as you just saw. Fantastic, all right? All right, so in this section, I want to talk about one of the best features of the Note 20 series, which is designed to hide sensitive data from prying eyes. This option allows you to lock away and hide your private content such as specific photos, files, docs, videos, and even apps. This feature is known as the secure folder. It works in a fantastic way. So let's dive in and discover how it works. And of course, first, let me show you how to actually set it up. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do is to actually set up the secure folder for the very first time. So what you want to do is you want to go into your settings and then you want to scroll down to biometrics and security. You click it and then again you scroll down and you're going to see secure folder right here. It says keep your personal files and apps safe and secure. So when you click it for the very first time, you're going to see a brand new welcome screen. So you tap on agree. Okay. And you do have to sign into this with your Samsung account. Now in my case, I'm just going to put my fingerprints. That's the way I set it up and it's going to log into my Samsung account. You may just have to manually put your password and your username, but I'm good to go. It is creating the actual secure folder and you can see all the highlights, add files to the secure folder to keep them private. Uh, you know, keep your apps secure if that's what you want. Now, the very first setting that you are going to have to pick up is you're going to have to pick up a PIN number. Now, I do want to let you know this PIN number is going to be a separate PIN number than the one you use to lock your phone or a separate password unique for the secure folder. And also make sure you enable fingerprints so you're going to be able to unlock the secure folder with your fingerprints. So I'm going to tap, I'm going to, I'm going to choose pin, tap on next. Uh, let's just pick something simple for this video. All right, let's uh, confirm that. Again, that's different than from my other pin number. So my secure folder is now ready. Now let me quickly show you what's happening with this guy. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I'm going to show you everything, but first the basics. So let's go home first and foremost. And what's going to happen is after you set it up for the very first time, you are going to be able to uh, access it from the app drawers. It's known as secure folder. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to dump it onto the home screen just for easy access. Okay. In the middle here. So now when I click it, it launches a secure folder 
it did not ask a password. Let's quickly rectify that because this is supposed to be a hidden space where you hide your photos, videos, messages, and stuff like that. So tap on the settings, go into the settings, all right, and choose this option. Tap auto lock secure folder immediately. Now, when I exit and try to go back in, it's going to ask for a pin or a fingerprint, all right? Now, let's go inside with my pin number for now. Let me show you how to move photos from your public folders to your secure folder. So let me launch my public gallery, okay? So public gallery is just sitting in my apps. So it's right here. I'm gonna grab one photo right now. You can do multiple photos. I'm gonna do one photo right now. Let's do this photo here. I'm gonna tap on it. I'm gonna tap on the button here and it says move to secure folder. When you do this, it's gonna ask you to either you know put in your fingerprints or the pin number for the secure folder so in this case I'm just gonna go like that it's moving the item the item is gone disappeared it's completely hidden nobody can see it anymore now when I go back home and if I go to my secure folder because this is a secure area nobody can enter this unless they have the password or your fingerprints okay so I'm gonna log into it I'm gonna go to my secure gallery this is not my public gallery application. This is a secure, private, and hidden gallery application. And the photo, let me just allow that, that I moved over is right here. Now, you can unhide photos. So if this photo, you did not, you did not want to hide it anymore, you just tap it and you can say move out and it goes back to the public gallery. But as long as you keep it here, it's going to be secured in here. Nobody can see it. Okay, you tap it. Nobody can access this. So that's amazing. I'm going to show you one more thing that's very, very cool. If I were to launch my camera application from the secure folder, and if I were to take a photo, which I just did right now, just an example, it's just going to be a dark photo. When that photo gets saved, it goes into the secure gallery. It's going to be right here. Okay, that's the one I just took. The reason is everything you, you do within the secure folder environment stays in the secure folder. Now, if I were to go outside and use the camera here outside of the secure folder, that photo would just get saved in the regular gallery. It would not go to the secure folder gallery. So when I go to my secure folder, if I were to go my Samsung notes, and if I were to create a notes application, uh, I'm sorry, a brand new note, it's gonna be a secret note. So let's just say uh, test, I'm just going to say title T. And remember, this is happening in the secure folder. So everything is going to stay in the secure folder. I go back, I can see it here, but when I go back outside to my regular Samsung Notes, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see the T that I just uh, put it up there. So tap over here, go to all notes, and you're not going to see the T in here but when I go inside the secure folder, the note that I created within my secure environment gets saved here. Now, how do you move any file that you want to the secure folder? You simply tap on add files, okay? From here, you can pick your images, videos, audio, documents, any kind of document, PDF document, Word document, whatever, my files, you tap on this one, you can pick any file that you want on your phone using the file explorer, okay? Let me just go back out. So that's the way you add any file into the secure folder and access it with the corresponding application. Now, what if you wanna add an application, a secure copy of an application into the secure folder? You tap on add applications and pick any application that you want. So I can have a separate calendar application in the secure folder, right now I do actually, and anything I do here stays there, all right? So let me just skip all this stuff, cancel, all right? So add files and applications using this main menu. Now let's move on and talk about some more advanced stuff uh, with the secure folder. What I like to do is I like to tap on the settings button here, go to customize, and I like to change the name of the secure folder. I can change it to something like this, look. So finance. All right, so I'm going to change the name to finance and I'm just going to give it a different uh, piggy bank right here. 
apply. Now when I go out, the secure folder doesn't say secure folder, it just says finance. So somebody clicks on it and they see that it requires a password, to them it just makes sense. It's a finance folder, of course it's going to need a password, they just back off, okay? Uh, if it said secure folder or secret files, then they would be curious. What's in there? What's he hiding? What's she hiding? But in this case, finance, okay, everybody hides their finances, all right? So that's one thing I like to do. Number two, I like to go to my settings right over here. And even though we set, up, set this up initially, if you haven't forgotten, do go inside, put your PIN number in, and make sure the fingerprints are in fact enabled. Because it's very easy to log in with your fingerprints. I go outside, I tap it. Instead of putting my password or PIN number, just biometrics, boom, you're right inside and you can look at the stuff that you hid, all right? Now, I'll show you one more thing. If I'm in the public gallery, let me just bring up my regular gallery application right here. If I, were, if I wanted to move multiple photos, I can just select the ones that I want to move. Again, tap here and I can say move to, now it even renames it right here, move to finance. So that's going to take two photos at the same time and move it over to my secret files, my secure folder. So you can batch process stuff if you want. Now, one more important thing, if I go into my settings, all right, uh, you wanna go to backup and restore and you wanna make sure you're backing up your secure folder to your Samsung account. You can use any account that you want. It doesn't have to be your main Samsung account. You can have a Samsung account specifically for the secure folder and just back it up, okay? It's gonna be backed up encrypted, it's gonna be secure, so when it goes to the cloud, nobody else can see it because it is gonna be encrypted, so you're safe. But the only reason you wanna do this is when you back up your secure folder, you can later restore it to another Samsung device from this menu right here, all right? As you can see, there's a restore option. You log into your account, you restore from a backup, uh, from before. And that's basically it. I think this is the best implementation of any secure folder on the planet. Other uh, manufacturers have been trying this. It's not as good because nobody can uninstall this, okay? Nobody can press and hold and uninstall this. It's always there and it always requires a password. It can be backed up and restored to any Samsung phone so the data never gets lost. It's a fantastic little tool. Uh, you can play with it even more and, you know, learn as much as you can. But I will give you one more tip. If you were to go to My Files, for example, okay, let me just grab this file, right? I just grab that file, I can tap here, and I can move it to Finance, as you can see. So anywhere from anywhere, I can move Send Files over to my secure folder, or I can do it right from here. All right. All right, so in this section, we are going to be talking about every single advanced feature for the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 series. So let's dive in and get started. Now, when I say advanced features, I am referring to a specific menu in the phone. So you go to the settings, okay, and then you scroll down and you go into advanced features right over here. And these are all the advanced features available on the smartphone. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from top all the way to the bottom and cover every single feature. Now, I will let you know, I am gonna skip the S Pen because there's a separate video for that for which I'll drop a link below. That's a 25 minute video going over all the S Pen features. Now, let's start with the side key feature. So let's go inside and we're talking about the side key right over here. It is in fact customizable. So in my case, when you double press it, I set it so it launches the camera. If you want, you can launch an application. You go to the settings, you pick the application you want. I have the calculator because I use it all the time. So when I double tap the side key, it launches my calculator. I do my thing and move on. Now, the other thing is if you press and hold, what do you want the button to do? Now, some people go with this one. So when you press and hold, you get the power menu, but then you can also access the menu, the power menu, uh, right from here. So I think that's a little bit redundant. So I just keep it at Wake Bixby in case I need to ask Bixby uh, some weather information. So I press and hold it. What's the weather like today in New York? Today 
New York, New York. It is mostly cloudy with a high... And I get the response that I want, okay? So that's what I do with the side key. Let's go back. Now, I am going to skip the Bixby routines. I'm going to go and talk about these tours. The end, it is a complex tool, and I want... And I do want you guys to learn about it. So we'll talk about that. I'm also going to push these two settings to the end. So we're going to be talking about Bixby routines, this one, and link to windows at the end of the video. Let's quickly look at some of the interesting stuff. So let's look at smart pop-up view. So when you tap it, it is a separate menu. You can enable it for individual applications. Let's enable and see exactly what it does. So I'm going to enable... Uh, smart pop-up view for my messages application and then I'm gonna grab my other phone here I'm gonna send myself a message and see what happens okay so as you can see we got a smart pop-up view now this is a text message icon I can put anywhere on the screen I can put it aside. the side when I'm ready I can tap on it and I can take that message that I was uh, receiving from the other person and this is a window here I can exit out no problem now I can use smart pop-up view for any application that send me notifications. I can enable them right from here. Okay, so that's an option that you have. Let's talk about the screenshots and the screen recorder option. So screenshots is very basic. Let's quickly take a screenshot. Okay, I'm going to take it uh, power button and the volume down button at the same time. It takes a screenshot and at the bottom you'd see a screenshot toolbar that gives you a bunch of options. That's what this is. You don't have to enable that. You can disable it if you don't want it. Now when I take a screenshot, you just take the screenshot, saves it. If I have this enabled, and if I take the screenshot, I get that thing at the bottom, I can press it and I can do uh, different things uh, that is available on the actual toolbar, uh, such as write on the actual photo. And of course I can do that with the S Pen as well. Okay, so that's the screen toolbar, and then we have hide status and navigation bars. So when you take a screenshot, let me take one right now. Now I'm going to go to my gallery. Okay, let's uh, pull up my gallery, and here's the screenshot I took. Now this screenshot actually includes the navigation bar, I mean, I'm sorry, the status bar on the top, and the navigation at the bottom. Now if I go back into my settings, and if I say hide status and navigation bars, now when I take a screenshot, Okay, and if I go back into my gallery right here, this screenshot is not going to have the navigation bar or the status bar. It's going to be hidden. All right, so you can really customize things. The next one, if you share a screenshot, so if I take the screenshot and if I share it with somebody right away, let's just share this with, with somebody here. Okay, I'm just going to send it over here, for example. Right after I share it, do you want to keep it or do you want to automatically delete it? That's what this does. What about the screenshot format? I recommend that you keep this at JPEG format. That's the most universal format uh, to save your photos in. Now let's talk about the actual screen recorder. We can record the screen. So I tap on this guy and I get all these options to configure my screen recorder. Now first and foremost, how do I record the screen? Let's go home, let's pull this down just like that and it's gonna be somewhere in here. So let's uh, look for it. And there's the option, screen recorder option. When I tap on this one, you give permissions that it asks for, okay? Now it's gonna ask you, as I record the screen, do you want to record the sounds? Do you want to record your voice also with the sound in the actual device? So I'm gonna say no sound, tap start recording, okay? It's gonna do a countdown. Let's take a couple seconds. Now it's recording the screen. And there's a toolbar on the top and then I can stop it when I'm done with it. It gets saved into my gallery. Let me go over here. It is in my screen recordings folder, so I'm gonna play this. So I can record anything I do on the display, no problem, okay? So that's what the screen recorder is. Again, when you go into that uh, setting right here, you have the option to record sound off the device, off the device and the mics on the phone, and also you can choose the video quality. Okay, it's all up to you. The higher the quality, the more space it takes. So you do have the screen recording option. Now let's move on and talk about direct share. Not very important anymore, but if you do go here, basically when you try to share something with somebody, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a panel on the top of the sharing screen 
from which you can pick the person immediately. So again, if I go to my gallery, uh, let's say I want to share this video with somebody, uh, it would show up at the top under direct share option if it was available. Now the nearby share option is much better. It's not an advanced feature, so we're not going to cover that, but don't even worry about direct share. I can just turn that off and start using the nearby share option, which is going to be in this area. If I scroll over, it should be somewhere here. If you don't see it here, just tap this button, All right? Tap on button order. It's going to be on the top. Just drag and drop it to activate it, all right? So that's for sharing. So the direct share is not that important. Reduce animations. It's going to make your phone feel faster. So normally when I go home, you're going to see an animation. When I bring up the panels, you're going to see a little animation. With this option, you reduce the animations. So it's just going to feel a little bit faster. As you can see, the animations were reduced as I scroll through the phone. It will even save you some battery life. All right, so let's talk about the motions and gestures that we have right here, okay? So this one here is very easy. It says lift awake. So basically, uh, if I turn this on and the phone is turned off, so if the phone is just sitting on the table flat, I can just lift it and it's gonna wake up the phone. I can glance at it and I'm good to go, okay? So that's the lift awake feature. And then we have the double tap to wake up feature. So again, if the phone is turned off, double tap, it's gonna wake up the lock screen, all right? So those are two quick features you want to set up. Now this one here is a little more complicated. When you have this turned on, basically as long as you're looking with your eyes into the front camera, the screen is not going to turn off. So that's useful if you're reading an article and you're just staring at the phone, the phone knows you're looking at it and it's, gonna, it's not going to turn off the phone. So you read your article, when you're done you put it away and then it turns off by itself. Fantastic, right? Then we have the smart alert. Now smart alert is nice because if you get a text message or if you get a call and your phone was sitting just like this on the table, what's going to happen is your phone is going to vibrate when you grab it and go like this. It's just going to vibrate to let you know you have a notification. So if you were in the kitchen, the phone was in the living room, you can simply come back, go like this, if the phone doesn't vibrate, you don't have any notifications, keep moving on, all right? So that's that. And of course, then what we have here is we have the easy mute option. This is great because if you have an incoming call or if you have an alarm, all you do is do this and it's going to mute the call or the alarm for you. Or you can just go like this. It's going to mute the call or mute the alarm by the way, if you're wondering what case this is, I'll drop a link down below. You can go check it out. It's a fantastic little case uh, straight from Samsung. All right. So that's the easy mute. Very easy to mute your phone. Then we have palm swipe to capture. You tap on this one. All you do is swipe your uh, hand across the screen and it takes a screenshot as you just saw. Make sure you're touching the screen. It's not going to happen if you do it on the air. So you touch it right here. Go like this. Uh, let me just start from here. There we go. We got, a, we got a, a quick screenshot. Okay. And then finally, under motions and gestures, we have swipe to call or send messages. So if you're in my uh, text messages, for example. So if I'm in my phone application, I can go like this. I can swipe to this side to message or swipe to this side to call. Okay. So that's what it means uh, to swipe to call or send messages. Let's go back and focus on the one-handed mode. So this mode basically allows you to use the phone with one hand. So if you have the buttons enabled, in my case I do, okay, all I do is double tap the home button, activates the one-handed mode. I can use the, the phone with one hand, as you can see, if I was holding it like this, very easy to use the entire phone with just one hand. So that's great, I can go anywhere I want. Uh, by the way, double tap, uh, if I am, if I want to get rid of the one hand mode, I can just tap on the black area, goes back to full business. And one more thing, I can also change the size and customize it even further. So I can make it as small as I want and I can left or right justify it if I so desire. When I'm done, tap here. Very easy to use with one hand if you want. Simply choose which gesture you want to use to activate this. So this is the gesture mode. I can go like this, enable it by swiping down. This I like this better. Double tap, boom, boom, you're good to go. All right, let's move on. We have the game launcher option. If you enable it, 
all it does is give you a game launcher okay now the game launcher has a lot of features it's right here it aggregates all your games into one place and also it gives you a bunch of tools that you can use so here's all my games I also have access to instant games so I can quickly play games without even loading them they're free so I tap on this one okay here's a basketball game I can start playing it right away so that's part of the actual uh, game launcher let me go back out here for a minute uh, if I tap over here I do have a bunch of extra options on top of it such as tweaking the performance of my games from the game booster settings okay and when I do launch a game you you're gonna get a bunch of options so let me launch this game here as an example I have a bunch of extra options I can tap on it access even more settings game booster settings locking the screen and all that good stuff okay and I also have this one all right that's too loud so that's that's the game booster you enable it and you get a nice little menu uh, with extra gaming capabilities just enable that now video enhancer I'm gonna talk about this video enhancer is also amazing you enable this immediately improves the quality of your videos gives you more bright more vivid colors let's disable this let's go to YouTube uh, right over here let's just watch one video so I'm watching this video right now take a look at how it changes when I go to the video uh, enhancer option uh, enable it now I'm gonna go back and it's gonna be brighter you saw how it became brighter and more vivid let me do it one more time let me go back here disable it okay go back that's not as bright and vivid okay so you can try this with full screen it's gonna look much better so that's the video enhancer now dual messenger is great because now you can use applications like whatsapp and facebook with multiple accounts so if you have a facebook personal account and a business account you can keep them separate here or if you have a stocking account you can use it here as well you can log into these accounts with two separate account credentials I haven't seen most people use this feature so it's there if you want it now this feature is very important it's very uh, security related it's safety security so you go inside you enable stress messages okay accept all the terms that they give you and the first thing you do is you actually add a contact all right so let me create a contact I'm just gonna say x158 all right just an example here safe so I have a contact here I'm gonna go back now and look at what happens when this is on if you were ever in a situation of emergency what you can do is you can press this button three times in a row or four times if you want I, I, I recommend three times what the phone does after you press the button three times it takes pictures with both cameras records an audio of what's happening to you and sends a message to the person that you designate so that's the you can add multiple people here you can just have one emergency contact so if you're in a situation of emergency maybe you're getting assaulted or whatever just triple tap somebody will get that message and they'll hopefully uh, dispatch some help or come to help you just make sure all these options are enabled so the phone does take a photo and also records the audio to provide as many hints as possible if you don't need it you just turn it off okay not a big deal all right so let's go up now and talk about these guys let's first look at these two and then we'll talk about Bixby routines now let's talk about call and text on other devices so basically if you have a Samsung Galaxy tab or a Samsung laptop you can enable this feature and then you're basically are going to be able to take calls and text messages on your Samsung Galaxy Tab device or your Samsung laptop okay so again you have to set this up takes a minute I can tap on continue so if you have multiple Samsung phones in my case I do I'll switch this one as my main phone okay and that's it it does this setup process connects your Samsung account you want to make sure that your other devices are connected to the same Samsung account and that you're on the same Wi-Fi so when somebody calls you on this phone you can take the call on the other device if you want to very convenient to have the next option is link to Windows so basically you can link and project this entire phone as you see it onto your Windows computer simply 
by enabling this feature, logging in with your Microsoft account, and then you go over to your Windows PC, Windows laptop, whatever you have, Windows tablet, you log into your application, and boom, you can see everything that's happening on this phone on the actual Windows PC. Very nice feature to have. Now let's move on. All right, so let's talk about Bixby routine. So let me go inside. It looks a little advanced, but it's actually very simple once you grasp the content. So here we have a bunch of preset routines, and we here we have routines we can create ourselves by tapping the plus button. But let's first look at what is already there. So just a quick example, the routine is simply an if else statement. So if a condition is met, then do this. So for example, let's look at the before bed routine. You tap on it, gives you what happens. So what time do you go to bed? Let's say you go to bed at 12 p.m., uh, 11 p.m. So what you do is you tap on if time is equal to 11, all right, then when this condition is met, do all these options, as you can see. And of course, all this stuff is editable. You can tap on edit, and anything that you want, you don't want, you can remove it, as you can see. But anyway, in this case, the before bed routine, I'm just gonna discard the change for now. The before bed routine is simply if the time is 11 p.m. till 10.42 the next day, do these things when I go to sleep. Reduce the brightness, turn on the dark mode, uh, mute the phone, and change various settings. Fantastic, all right? Now, you have all these presets you can play with. You can see what, what it means. If the app is open, if the Samsung app is open, do this. Amazing, right? So create your own. Go to My Routines, tap on Plus, and then say If, add a trigger, Plus. If the, you can do all these things, by the way. Okay, all these things. So let's do something simple. If time is equal to 9.54 and 10.48, you can customize all that, start and end, okay? You can pick start and end. Uh, what, you, what you want the phone to do for you automatically is then do anything that you want. And you can do multiple things. Let's just pick a couple. Let's turn on the Bluetooth, all right? Just an example, plus do some more. Let's do three things. Turn off the data, okay, plus turn on the do not, turn on the keyboard song, all right? You click done, you give it a name, you save it, and that's your routine. Make sure it's enabled. When the time hits your set time, it does its job automatically. So you can automate your life using the Bixby routines. Fantastic. Now you can delete them, edit them, whatever you want to do. Press and hold, delete. Okay, it's all up to you create as many as you want. So that's the big speed routines and that's the end of the advanced features. All right, so we, we went through everything from top to bottom, except for the S Pen. We have a full 25 minute video on all this stuff. So watch that video, link is gonna be down below, but these are all the other advanced features. So the very first thing I wanna talk about has to do with your keyboard. So I'm gonna launch my messages application right over here. I'm just gonna bring up the keyboard, all right? And let's say you wrote something, but you want to make a change to it somewhere in the middle. It's a little hard to actually use your finger to find the correct spot, all right? So what you can do is you can use your keyboard as a trackpad, as a precision trackpad. Just press and hold on the actual uh, space bar, and you can move exactly where you want to move it. So I can move it right here, right next to R, okay, or G, whatever, and I can just... Uh, clear that out and fix it as I desire. So that's the precision cursor control for the keyboard. So that's number one with the keyboard. Now one more thing I'm gonna show you guys with the keyboard real quick is, uh, you can also tap on this button here and what you also have is you have this advanced text editing functionality that gives you a little joystick and all these options. So again, let me go over here and write something. Okay, let me just Okay, so I wrote a couple things over here. Now, if I tap on this one right over here, and if I go into my text editing feature, what I can do is first and foremost, again, I can precisely control the cursor, as you can see, but I can also use the select function. I can tap on select, and let's say I just wanna select these two options, and I can just cut that or copy it, okay? So you tap on select, and you select what you want to select, 
and you just cut it out or exit out, it's going to be up to you. So that is for precision cutting, copying, pasting, selecting, and cursor control all in one. Fantastic little feature. Now I'm using it in a very simple area here, but you can work with this with paragraphs, sentences, great for editing, especially if you're writing something on your phone. All right, so let's move on. The next feature is known as the live caption uh, feature. So let's uh, launch an application over here, okay? Uh, let's just launch YouTube. Here's a video I was watching a couple minutes ago. You tap on it, and this guy's talking, right? What you can do is you can go into your settings, all right? Then you could go into your accessibility right over here and go to hearing enhancements. From here, you go to live caption, you tap on it, and basically just enable this. Now I'll just tap on got it. Now when you go back out, all right, and I play this video, I am actually going to see live captions play with the video as you can see. So as this guy's talking, it is actually converting whatever he's saying to uh, live captions. And this is using Google, so it is going to be highly accurate. And of course, you can move this around or drag down to dismiss it. So that's fantastic, okay? You can put it right there. It's a very, very accurate uh, live captions built right into your phone inside that setting, okay? Even if you, if you play it like this, it continues and you can put it anywhere. Drag to dismiss, turn it off, you're good to go. Now one more hidden feature, you tap on the camera, there's the shutter button, you tap on this to take a photo. What you can do is you can just grab this and put it anywhere on the screen, okay? You can use this button or that button to take photos. Uh, the benefit of this is if you're holding a phone a certain way, you can have this shutter button exactly where you want it. Now, when you're done with it, you can grab it and put it where it belongs. Fantastic little tactic. And one more quick feature again with the keyboard. Let me just cover all that real quickly. So if you do bring up the keyboard and if you tap on the settings to go into the actual settings, uh, what you can do is you can go to style and layout. And from here, you can enable the high contrast keyboard. Now, when you go inside, it gives you four options. You can have this color, you can have this color, you can have this color, or you can have the blue color. So once you enable this and you go to your messages or whatever, you bring it up, boom, that's what you are going to see. All right, so plenty of features to customize your keyboard that are not apparent directly unless you really dig in to the actual settings. Let's move on to the next tactic. The next thing I want to talk about is very useful when it comes to giving your phone away to somebody. Let's say uh, you want to launch an application and you want to show it to your friend, but you want to make sure your friend doesn't exit the application and starts launching other applications, maybe even access your private files. You just want them to see what you want them to see on your phone. So normally what you can do is, let me just use this with the calculator as an example. So let's say this is all you want your friend to see. They just want to use a calculator. Normally when you tap this button, there is an option here that you don't see that allows you to actually pin windows so nobody can exit them unless they know the trick. So what you do is you go to your settings, all right? Uh, you go into biometrics and security. All the way down, you go to other security settings. And again, all the way down, you go to pin windows. You enable pin windows. Now, look at this. I go to the calculator, my friend just asked me for my phone, I'm like, okay, give me one second, what do you wanna use? He says, calculator. I tap on this right here, I say, pin this application, and I say, okay. Now, this application is, is pinned, he cannot tap the home button, he cannot exit this, no matter what he or she does, can only do what you want them to do. You can even go to the bathroom while you're doing it and don't worry about anything. Now, when you come back, get your phone back, all you do is, Press and hold both of these options, and it goes to the lock screen, okay? It's smart, it's not stupid. It goes to the lock screen, so again, even if they do it, they can't access anything else. And then you log in yourself, and boom, you're good to go. Now it's unlocked, it's unpinned, all right? So that's the screen pinning feature. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the power menu. So when you tap on the power menu, Normally, you see power off, you see a restart, and you see the emergency mode. Now, I'm going to enable a setting that's going to give you a fourth option that is able to do some really nice things for the purposes of actual security. All right, so what you do is you go to your settings, all right, and then you go into your lock screen, and then what you do is you go to secure lock settings. You tap on it, 
you have to put your passcode in and then you go next and then it gives you a brand new menu now at the bottom we have a show lockdown option so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable this now when I go to this menu here and I tap on the power button I see a fourth option known as the lockdown mode now here's what it does when I go and I do when I do perform a lockdown mode this is great as you're about to go to sleep you tap on lockdown mode and what it does is it locks your phone but it disables every kind of login other than the actual pin number so you cannot put your fingerprints in you cannot use a uh, smart lock features what you do is you have to swipe up okay and like in, like in the good old days you have to put in your actual pin number and the reason you want to do that before for example if you go to sleep is if you're sleeping maybe somebody can just grab your finger and try to lock the phone unlock the phone all right or if you have smart lock enabled your phone can still unlock if your smart watch is in the vicinity that's what smart lock is so if you want a real lockdown option that's the one you want to use now with this one when you when I turn off the phone the phone is locked but biometrics are active smart lock is active uh, and of course the pin number is active but that's the hardest thing to guess so make sure you go for the lockdown mode if you're concerned about about your security now most people may not have to worry about this but if you're in a special specific situation it might come very handy all right let's move on the next thing is when you launch your phone application all right if you tap on the settings on the top corner and go into the actual settings what I like here is the answering and ending calls feature so all you do basically is enable these two options so now if somebody calls you you can accept the call simply by tapping the volume up button as you can see right here and if you want to end an existing call all you do is press the end button let me quickly demonstrate so I'm calling myself with the other phone it's gonna pop up and what I can do is I can press volume up and it actually took the call now when I'm done with it I can press the uh, power button to end the call so now I have physical buttons to receive and end calls a great feature I use all the time now this next feature has to do with your edge panel so let me bring them in okay what you want to do is you bring them in you go to your settings and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you enable the smart select option now if you have a Samsung Galaxy Note device it's easy to access these using your S Pen but if you don't you can access and activate these settings no problem so once you have this active you go home you pull up your edge panel okay let me just go to the smart select option over here right here what I can do is I can go and I can use screenshots uh, in precision manner so I can do circular screenshots as you can see that was a screenshot I can save this I can even write on it with my hand all right and then I can save it no problem right here tap on save or you can do rectangle all right as you can see you click done again it saves it up or you can also create an animation you tap on this one it gives you a little window that you can move around you can even have a video in the background and then you say record and it creates an animation of whatever is playing in the back of this actual window which can also be resized okay that's gonna create a bunch of animated gifs for you guys and then if I go back here we do have the pin to screen option so I can choose anything I can be an application I'm just giving you an example here so let's say I want to pin this area to the screen I tap on pin to screen it stays right there so I can have let's say I'm referring to something here I can do whatever I want over here as that window is pinned to the screen now I can tap this anytime uh, download this area maximize it or exit out all right so fantastic little tack now one more thing I forgot to mention with the keyboard is if you tap on the keyboard if you bring it up and if you do go into your settings and if you do go into style and layout what you can do is you can go for the keyboard theme so you do have a bunch of themes you can choose from solid dark or solid dark so you don't have you're not locked to one option you can switch between all the various options on top of the high contrast keyboard that I showed you guys it's all going to be up to you all right so in this section I am going to be sharing sharing 10 crucial settings to enable or disable 
on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. So let's dive in and get started. These are some very important and useful settings that you need to be aware of if you own a Samsung Galaxy device. Let's dive in. Now the very first thing I wanna talk about has to do with the actual display. So we wanna go into display and go all the way down. At the bottom over here, we have something known as the touch sensitivity option. Now, if you have installed a screen protector on your smartphone, which you probably should, you wanna go ahead and enable this option here. This is gonna allow you to increase the touch sensitivity of the actual display, because when you install a screen protector, the touch interface takes a slight hit. So even though the phone feels faster, it is actually a little bit slower because of that extra lag the actual screen protector produces as an additional layer on top of the display. So if you have installed a screen protector, make sure touch sensitivity is enabled so the phone is nice and responsive and experienced the way it's supposed to be experienced. Now let's move on. All right, so the next one has to do with security. So let's go to the settings. Let's scroll down just a little bit, go into lock screen, tap on it. And then over here, what you have is you have something known as the secure lock settings. You wanna tap on this and it's gonna ask you to put your pin number, do that, and you'll be in this menu right here. Now here's the most important thing you want to actually enable. This one says lock instantly with side key. Additionally, you wanna go over here and you wanna make sure the phone is locked immediately. You wanna make sure these two are enabled. Now if I disable this one and also make this, let's just say 30 seconds, look at what happens. I'm gonna lock my phone and let's say I just walked away. Anybody can come, double tap on the screen, and the phone is actually not locked. It's not locked, but when you have this enabled, and if you have this too immediately, now when I turn off the phone, if somebody tries to log in as I walk away for a couple minutes here, or a couple seconds, look at that. They have to put in the pin number or the fingerprint sensor. So make sure these two uh, crucial security settings are properly enabled. Additionally, make sure lock network and security is in fact enabled. You wanna enable this. So basically when the phone is turned off and if somebody comes here and pulls this thing down, they are unable to make any changes to any network related option. So that gives you an additional layer of security when it comes to your network and stuff like that. So Wi-Fi and mobile data cannot be turned off if the phone is locked. These are subtle settings, but sometimes they make a difference. So make sure you properly configure them. All right, next up, again, a security feature. Let me go to this website, and here's a login place. It's got your username and your password. Now, here's the crazy part. The username is not a big deal. Obviously, everybody can see that. But when you are typing your password, if somebody's looking over your shoulders, let's say I press A. If you can see for a couple seconds, there was the letter shown that you were actually typing in as your password. So when I tap on D, you will see the D, G, H, F, J. You'll see the J for just a little bit. Uh, if somebody's staring at it like a hawk, they might be able to actually memorize your password, especially if your password is simple, which unfortunately a lot of people have that problem. So I'm gonna show you guys how to disable this so when you are typing stuff, nobody can see what you're typing. All you see is just these black dots. So what you wanna do then, you wanna to go to settings, you wanna go all the way down, actually not down, you just wanna to go to biometrics and security, you tap on it, then you wanna go all the way down, go to other security settings, you tap on it, and here we have an option that says make passwords visible, okay? Why would you even do that? Make it invisible. Now when I go back over here, okay, and I try to type something, you'll notice it doesn't give that little preview, okay? All uh, you see is just the black dots. So just one extra layer of security. And also just a nice hidden feature to be aware of, okay? Let's move on. All right, so next important setting that a lot of people forget to enable, and it is an amazing feature, if you go to your settings, okay? You wanna scroll down again, go to biometrics and security, and what you wanna do is you wanna to go to Find My Mobile. You tap on this one, and you wanna make sure this is enabled, and once you do enable it, it's gonna ask you to log into it with your Samsung account. At this point, if you don't have one, you should create a Samsung account. So once you create the account, you're able to log in. 
Now, basically what Find My Mobile allows you to do, if you lose your phone, you can track your phone on a web browser by simply going to findmymobile.samsung.com. And then you log into it using this account right here that you use to log into this service. So here's a scenario. The phone got lost. You have no idea where it is. You can go to any computer. You can go to your friend's phone. You can, you can pull up your tablet. And all you have to do is type in this address here, findmymobile.samsung.com. In fact, let me click it, okay? It will take me to a website. Once you're at that website, you log in. It's going to bring up a map, and the map is going to show you exactly where that phone is. Hopefully, it is still on, and then you have all these options over here. You can ring that phone. You can remotely lock the phone. You can track its location. You can erase the data on the actual phone. You can unlock the phone, back up the phone. Let's say you lost it, and you need all your data. Just back it up remotely. It's going to go to your Samsung Cloud from where you can retrieve all the data on your phone. So let's say you lost your phone, at least you're not losing your data. You can extend the battery life and all that good stuff. So this is a major feature for this phone that needs to be enabled. And if you wanna go nuts, just enable these three settings. Uh, enable remote unlock, send the last location. So right before the battery dies on the phone, it sends its last known location to your phone so at least you have an idea where it was right before the battery died and then you can turn this on as well the more of these options are enabled the easier it is to locate a phone that has been lost so very important feature that you need to enable let's move on and talk about the next tactic now the next thing you want to do is again go to your settings you want to go down and then you want to go to device care now this feature this tip is going to make sure your phone runs at maximum performance at all times. The first thing obviously is here it is when you go to device care, you get a score. You want to make sure that is at, that is at least above a 90 at all times. If you see a, a low number, just tap on optimize now. No problem. It's going to get you that 100 score. But that's not a huge deal. Here's what you really want to do. You want to tap on the top corner here and you want to go into advanced. Once you're in the advanced, you want to make sure these two options are in fact enabled. First one is auto optimization. In my case, it is scheduled to run every night at 3 a.m. And now I'm going to enable this as well. Close apps to free up memory on your phone. So this is just going to auto optimize my phone every day and get me that 100 score automatically. So when I wake up in the morning, my phone is at 100 fresh and good to go for the day. The other thing you want to do is you want to go back into the advanced and you want to go to auto restart, enable this and pick a day, just one day per week or two per week is enough. So let's just do, uh, let's do Monday and Thursday. So on Monday and Thursday, what the phone is going to do is going to restart itself at 3 a.m. As long as these four conditions are in fact met. Restarting your phone on an Android device is very important to maintain maximum performance and functionality at all times. So make sure those two things are in fact enabled. And again, when you're in the auto restart, just make sure you pick a time uh, when the phone restarts, it doesn't actually interrupt something you were doing. So that's why I have it at 3 a.m. I'm sleeping. It just happens by itself. In the morning again, I'm good to go. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you understand is this is a mistake I made before. That's why I brought this example. Make sure that the auto optimiz op optimization time is a little bit different than the restart time. So I can do the auto optimization at 2 a.m., okay? So they don't uh, conflict with each other. And then auto restart, do it at 3 a.m. after one hour. But only on Mondays and Thursdays, all right? Now one more thing, when I tap on the Recents button, at the bottom we have a bunch of applications that just pop up. If you don't want to see these guys, all you do is tap this icon, go to Settings, and Disable Suggested Applications. Now it's going to look a little bit more cleaner. The apps at the bottom, the recently or most used applications, are gone. I, I realize that I never actually use those, so I just turn it off. If you don't need something, just turn it off. 
Believe it or not, on a microscopic level, it saves you some battery. One more thing you want to enable real quick is if you go to your settings, okay, uh, you want to go down. This has to do with your battery. It's going to extend your battery just a little bit. You want to go to device care, okay, and then go to battery and go into the app power management. When you go here, just make sure adaptive battery is in fact enabled. So what that's going to do is if you have any apps you don't use all the time, it's going to limit the battery usage for those applications so they don't waste battery life in the background, especially if there are applications you don't use often. So the phone keeps track of what application you use and don't use and the applications you don't use can waste battery in the background. But with this option enabled, it's going to limit that nonsense and you are going to get extended battery life absolutely fantastic let's move on all right so those were 10 settings i wanted to quickly share with you guys to make sure you turn on and maybe turn some of them off but mostly on because these are some really crucial settings all right so in this section we are going to be talking about the wireless dex functionality found on the samsung galaxy note 20 series so here's my Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and here's a TV, and the phone is wirelessly casting wireless decks onto this LG TV. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up and what are the things you can do. And you can see that we're also getting notifications both on the decks and on the phone as I'm getting them, all right? So let's dive in again. No other phone can do this as of now. Now, before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, this one happens to be an LG TV and I'm gonna connect that phone to this TV using wireless decks. So let's dive in and get started. Let me show you how all this works together. So I'm gonna go to my phone, all right? And what you want to do is you want to pull down the notifica notifications panel right over here. As you can see, you want to swipe over till you find Dex. Now, when you click on it, it's going to go into the search mode. It's going to be looking for a TV to connect to. Now, with the LG TVs, you have to first configure it so it accepts the screen share option. So it's very easy. Here's the remote control. I simply tap on the input tab and then go into the screen share option as you can see right over here. I'm gonna click that and that's gonna take me to the screen share option. Now, as soon as I do that, here's the funny thing, on my phone I do get a prompt that's asking me, do you want to start Samsung Dex on the LG WebOS TV? which is this TV right here. Now I'm gonna cancel this. I do wanna show you guys this screen. As you can see, it says Samsung DeX. It wants to connect wirelessly to a TV that actually supports wireless DeX connection. Now most modern TVs, Samsung TVs, LG TVs will connect. And if you're having some trouble, you simply click view more information to get some more details. Now in my case, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tap on the LG WebOS TV. And I'm gonna say start now and take a look at what happens on the TV. I tapped on start now and boom, the Samsung DeX functionality starts right over there. Now, if you look at my phone, it is just sitting there. I can make phone calls. I can do whatever I want on the actual smartphone right now. You know, I can go over here, read my messages, swipe up and down, whatever. Now, what I can do is I can use the phone as a trackpad to actually control the TV. To do that, I'm gonna swipe it down and there's gonna be a couple of prompts. So over here you can see it says Samsung DeX is running and if I keep going down, you'll see we have use your phone as a touchpad functionality and also on the top we have the smart things that pops up. Now if I tap on this one, it allows me to send my audio straight to the TV, which is great if I'm watching some videos. So anyway, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, use your phone as a touchpad. Take a look at what happens. The phone has now turned into a touchpad and there's a mouse icon right over here. As you can see, 
okay? Now when I come back here and I put my hand on the phone and just move it around, the pointer actually works with my finger as you can see. So that's absolutely fantastic that I'm using the built-in computer on the actual phone, on the TV, wirelessly. And because I'm running a very high quality network, there is barely any lag. And of course, this is your typical Dex interface. At the bottom, we have some uh, notifications. The time, the battery of the actual phone is right there. Okay, that's the screenshot button. Uh, over here, we have some of our applications, My Files, Internet, Play Store. At the bottom, you know, we've got the start button that goes into the applications. And then we have the recents, uh, this one, recents, home, and back button. Now, let me just go back here to my phone, which is right over here, and just show you a little bit of what you can do on the actual screen. All right, so I'm sitting right over here. Here's the phone. Let's do some controlling over here. So that's the mouse. Again, I'm using this as a touchpad. I'm going to go over to my gallery real quick, right here. Double tap on the phone, and that's going to launch the gallery. And I can go back over here, and I can actually maximize this if I want to. Okay, just to show you what's happening. Then I can click on the folder here, and I can tap and see my photos. Okay, so that's fantastic. Now, I'll show you one more thing. I can use multi-touch gesture, so I can pinch in and out to zoom in and zoom out on the photo. Look at that. That's absolutely fantastic, okay? It's a seamless way to work with your uh, wireless decks. Now, I'm going to go to the top. I'm just going to go... Actually, let me show you one more thing. I can swipe over with two fingers to go to the next photo, okay? Just like this. So that's great as well. Now, let's go up here, okay? I'm just going to X this out real quick. That's the desktop right there. Now, what if I want to right-click all... Now, what if I want to right click on the actual desktop? All I do is I double tap this and let go and the right click menu pops up. From here, I can go again using the trackpad on the phone. I can go to wallpaper and I can change my wallpapers right from here, okay? That's also quite fantastic. All this is happening wirelessly. Let's go to the home screen, uh, set the wallpaper. That's great. Now we have a brand new wallpaper. And again, if I go down over here, at the corner, I can tap here. These are all my applications. Over here is the button that allows me to exit the DEX mode, as you can see. But I can access all these applications, no problem. Here's the Geekbench, okay, uh, application. And if I were to go to history, you can see that the Geekbench uh, score for this phone is pretty good. That's 967 and 3188 multi and single and then i can put this down i can minimize it if i want to and they all go down over there and over here we have a bunch of other options i can access and again i'm controlling this using the phone as a track that i can control the volume uh, take a screenshot of the entire screen get saved uh, i have the wi-fi stuff right over here these i've got my clock right over here if i click it it expands a little bit I can go to quick settings and all that good stuff. All right, so that's just fantastic. Let me just go to the settings. Let's see how that looks like. Double click. So these are the settings. On the top, you've got the Samsung deck settings. Now, even though I'm using this as a trackpad to control the TV wirelessly, uh, the Samsung DeX functionality, I can also attach a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard, and then I can just keep using my phone at the same time use DeX with a mouse and keyboard. But right now, this just makes it very easy to demonstrate. This is just amazing. Now, while I'm in the actual DEX mode, the wireless DEX mode, I can always come back here. Okay, just pull this up, double tap this. Just tap it once, the recents button. Uh, wait, let's bring it up. There we go. And that's gonna make sure that I exit the trackpad mode so I can use my phone, keep the DEX running in the background, no problem and I can use my phone as long as I want. And then when I, go, when I wanna go back into my trackpad desk mode, I just go over here, go up, and it's right there. It says, use your phone as a touchpad. You tap on it, boom, back in business. By the way, I can rotate this just like this and use it like this. So that's fantastic as well. 
any way that you like. It rotates automatically. Oops, let me put that back here. All right, so that's it. That's a quick look at the wireless DEX functionality and how it works. Make sure your TV is compatible to accept wireless connections. Like I said, most modern TVs are gonna be good to go but you're gonna to have to find how to get it done. On my TV, like I said, I had to go into the inputs and choose screen share, and this is an LG TV. I had to choose the screen share option. All right, that's the input I chose, and make sure, of course, your TV is connected to your local Wi-Fi, and so is the actual phone, so that they can talk to each other. All right, let's exit this real quick. Look at that, the phone is here, the desktop is there, amazing. All right, so in the final section, I'm gonna show you how to create and edit movies on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. Now, in this example, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S20, but you can have any other smartphone. You can have an S9, S10, Note 9, Note 10, whatever you have. So basically, I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna give you full details on how to create an actual movie with all the built-in tools of your uh, Galaxy smartphone, as you can see. So let's dive in and get started. Before I dive in, this is the editor, that's the movie editor, and I do want to let you know you can use it either in portrait orientation, or if you prefer, you can use it in landscape orientation just like this. It's nice, smooth, and easy to use. Let's dive in and start from the very beginning. So basically, once you're done watching this tutorial video, you'll be able to create your own little movie just like this on your Samsung Galaxy Note device. Let me play the video. I have a background music in the video. I have titles on the actual uh, video. And you'll notice I even have transition effects that, that get applied from one clip to another, just like that, all right? So let's dive in and show you how to get all this stuff done on your Galaxy smartphone. So everything starts in your gallery. So let's go to my gallery real quick. And I'll let you know I have a bunch of albums here. Now I do have one album here that has a bunch of car clips. So I basically recorded a bunch of clips from my car, and again, you can do this with anything. You can do this with your pets, with your children. You record a bunch of movies, and then we stitch them together to create a movie. So I have a bunch of car clips in this album, and as you can see, here they are. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of these clips to create a brand new movie. So what you wanna do, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna start to select the clips that you want to use in your movie. So I wanna, for example, use this clip here. I'm gonna use this one, I'm gonna use this one, I'm gonna use this one, and let's get one more over here. I'm gonna use this one and one more right there, okay? Once you're done selecting the clips that you want to use, you tap this movie creation button that's on the top. When you tap it, you're gonna see two options. One of them is a highlight reel, the other one is a self-edited movie. In this video, when we wanna look at the self-edited movie, uh, if you do this, it's just gonna create something for you automatically by mixing the clips that you have chosen. That's fun as well, but this is the one where you can do everything yourself and create your own masterpiece. So I'm gonna tap on self-edited. It's gonna start the load. What it's gonna do is it's going to load the movie editor. Now, when I tap on this one, my multitasking window, you'll see we are in the create movie application. And all the clips I've chosen are gonna be at the bottom in the order that I've chosen them, all right? So they're gonna be right here at the bottom. Right now, I can play this movie, okay? So I'm gonna tap on this, and the movie actually starts to play, as you can see. Now, if you look at these clips, I'm gonna pause it for a second. This clip right here, for example, is 10 seconds. This one is also 10 seconds. It tells you how many seconds each clip that I selected is, and you can also edit every single clip. But remember, you can always preview this with your finger just like this. Look at how smooth it is because we do have a powerful processor in this smartphone. It should also look similar on other smartphones like the Note 9, Note 10, S9, S10, no problem. Now every movie should have a title. So what you can do is you can go over here, tap on this one, and you can create a title. Let's just say my uh, car, okay? And then just tap over here, interior, okay? So you're adding a title to your uh, movie, and then that's the title's gonna show up right here, and it shows you exactly where it's gonna appear, all right? So look at that. 
Uh, let me pause this for a second. I can switch the side of this. Uh, for example, I can have it, let me just tap, I can have it in the, in, the, in the left, I can have it in the center, or I can have it on the right side if I so desire. As you can see, it shows up right there on the right, but I'm gonna keep it in the center. It just looks nice, okay? So once I'm done with that, I can go back to my preview window. This is my preview window, okay? Look at that. That's the title I just put on my uh, video. It says, My Car Interior. Now with this clip, let's say I wanna just show this clip for five seconds. So what I do is I tap on it, and I then click on Edit, and then it's gonna load up a window where I can edit that clip individually. I can edit that clip. Now I'm gonna take it down to uh, five seconds, all right? Oh, did it happen? There we go five seconds and also I can add effects from here if I want to. All these effects are applying to that individual clip. I can even add text and stuff like that if I so desire. All right, but let's just keep it to five seconds. I'm gonna click done. Now that clip, this is 10 seconds. That clip, as you can see, is now only five seconds. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna rotate the phone to landscape orientation so we can see things even more clearly. So let's edit the movie like this. Uh, as you can see, the clips are at the bottom now, and the, uh, the preview window is right here, uh, the text window is right here, and the music window is right here. I'm gonna show you all these things in a second. Let me just zoom in on this actual thing. All right, so here we are. Now I'm gonna show you one really cool thing after this. So as you can see, as we move from one clip to another, there's a little yellow thing right here. That's actually a transition effect. If I tap on it, I can choose a transition. For example, I can choose dissolve. So when I swipe over, it just dissolves into the next clip, as you can see. By the way, anytime you can pause or play, this is called a timeline. You can pause and play with the timeline. And okay, you can also move around. So you have the dissolve effect, as you can see. Let's look at that one more time. I just added that by myself, all right? There we go. Now, again, when you add a dissolve effect here, it also adds it to the other uh, transition areas right here between the clips. I can also tap it again and change it to something else. I can do fade, all right? Now, with fade, it's a little bit different. Let's look at it, how that works. So now it's going to fade from one clip to the other. There we go, okay? That's great. What I can also do, again, is when I tap on these, you can what you can do is you can edit the movie, you can make it shorter, apply effects, like I showed you earlier, or you can split a clip. So if I tap on, like, let's say this is a 10-second clip, I can tap on split, then I can take the, the, the little, uh, this is the razor blade right here, I can put it anywhere I want where I want to split that movie into two. So I can put it right there, tap on the arrow, and now that movie is split into two. It's the same thing, but I split it for whatever reason. But that's just an option you have. And let's say there's a clip you do not need anymore. You can tap on it and delete that clip. Now that clip is gone, but I still have this one right here, okay? So that's fantastic. When you tap on any clip, you can edit, split, or delete. When you tap on here, you can add or remove a transition. And when you tap on this over here, you can add a text overlay clips. So anytime I add a text overlay, it's going to show up in the beginning for a couple seconds. Now the next thing that is very important is the actual music that plays in the background. All movies get better if you add an actual uh, music in the background. Now when I go to my music, let's say I select this clip right here, okay? This clip is right now selected. I'm going to tap on music and what I can do is I can kill the video sound. So that's the sound the microphone picked up when you're recording the video using your cell phone. But then what I can do is I can add background music. Now, I did take out the video sound, so when I go back out over here and I play this movie, I'm not gonna hear any background sound from the video that I recorded with my cell phone uh, on any one of these clips, okay? So when you kill the, kill the sound, even if you select one video and go to sound and kill the video sound, the video sound of the background sound disappears. And what I can do is I can add actual background music from my playlist or we have some presets. I can tap on add, all right? And from here, I have all these options that are copyright free and you can use them in your videos. You can also click on plus. That's gonna go into your music folder to download your local music. I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna go back. Let's say I want to use uh, this one right here. 
I can tap on them, it's gonna download them, it's gonna preview them for you. Look, that's a preview right there. So I'm gonna tap on this one, that's the one I want. And once I selected it, I can go back. It's gonna take me to my actual video clip. Now from here, I can change the sound of the background music, all right? I can change the sound of the actual background. Do I want low volume or high? I'm gonna keep it at high. Now let's go back to preview window. Now we have our movie all ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on play, look at the movie. That's my title, the music is in the background. We have our transition effects going on right over here. Take a look at that, transition, all right? Transition. Okay, when you're satisfied with your movie, all you do is press save and it's going to export and save the movie into your gallery. Now remember, every single time you can tap on each individual clip and edit it, okay? Once you edit that, you can go in there and you can do all these things from the side. I can add uh, stickers. I can pick from any sticker from here and I can add it to that individual movie clip. So let me just grab this so I can just put it right here, just an ex as an example, all right? Click play, that sticker is gonna remain there. I can click on done. Now it's gonna reflect on that individual video. And then I have the background music. Absolutely fantastic. Don't hesitate to go in and edit clips as you desire. Now, one more thing I can do, that's the final thing I'm gonna show you guys, is if there's a clip I wanna move over, I can just press and hold and just move it over to where I wanna put it. So now it's moved over to this side and these two have shifted to the right side. And when I'm ready, when I'm satisfied with my movie, I click on save and look, it's saving the video, exporting the video, so that's going to be absolutely fantastic. And see how quick it is. This video in the background is a 1080p video at 60 frames per second. And that was done pretty quick. Now, once you save the video, all you're going to do is go into your video editor folder. Let me go back in my gallery real quick, uh, right over here. And if I scroll down, let me see, where's my video editor folder? Right there, video editor folder. And that's the movie. That's a 49 second movie that I just made on my Samsung Galaxy smartphone, which is fantastic. You have to use these kind of functionalities to maximize your ownership of these smartphones. Let's play that video. Look at that, my car interior, okay? I added all that stuff. And then as I play the movie, look at the transition effect that I added myself and the music in the background. Fantastic, all right? All right, so that brings us to the end of this two hour plus video with tips and tricks and features to master your phone. And I do hope you guys benefited from this video. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.